Sentencing is tomorrow for Alec Murdoch, 100% in keeping with today's speedy guilty verdicts. One potential factor, which we talked about before the break, Murdoch's drug addiction, which he talked about on the stand. Listen. How many, uh, how many pills were you using a day? Depends on um, a number of items. Most, most importantly, how strong the pill was. I mean, how many are you taking at one time? How frequent in this time period, let's say January to June? You know, there's a point in time, and I'm not sure when it was. I, I think it was well before that where, and, and you have to understand this. Th this is something that I didn't, I mean, I can still remember the first time I ever took an oxy. Mr. Murdoch, can I ask you to answer my question, and I'll let you explain all you want. And my question was, I'm, how many were you taking a day during this time from January to June? Answer that first, please, and if you want to explain, I'm happy to let you do so. I'm not positive, and here's why. It's because over the years, like the, as I was saying, the first OxyContin, one OxyContin made me, literally made me sick. Um, and that was when I was transitioning from hydrocodone to oxycodone. And it, it made me sick because it's a really, really, really strong one. And so, you know, one OxyContin pill was like 10 hydrocodone pills. So, but anyway, as I took more and more, and over the years, it just, you know, you build up a tolerance to pain pills. And so what might give me this energy, what, the, the reason, one of the reasons I became so addicted is, you know, some people talk about pain pills and how they make them lethargic and, you know, where they can't do anything and they feel, opiates gave me energy. I mean, I, it, Whatever I was doing, it made it more interesting. You know, it, it, it made me want to do it longer. Uh, you know, to go on a drive, it made driving, it just, it just, at the beginning, it made everything better. I want to talk about that with the panel. I just want to correct something. Before the break, I said it was just days after the killings that the first, the check was found by someone in the law firm. And that was actually three months after the killings. Uh, but as Jessica pointed out, the day of the murders, the chief financial officer of the law firm uh, confronted him, had a talk with, uh, with, that's correct, right, Jessica? Yeah. Had a talk with Murdoch about what they had discovered already the day of the killing. Um, how do you think the, the, the drug use played in the courtroom? You know, we, Jessica and I were talking about whether that'll be used as a mitigating factor in sentencing. And in English, what happens is when there's a sentencing, there's aggravating factors and mitigating factors. I think the sentencing is going to be all about the nature and gravity of the offense. I think that he spends the rest of his life in jail, period. Now, if the drug use factored into the killing, now that might be, in my view, something you can mitigate. Say, hey, my client was on drugs and opioids and this and that. But he didn't own the killing at all. He just owned the opioids for a different reason. And so I don't think it assists him at all, if that's the question. I think there's no way that he does not, there's no way he leaves that jail for the rest of his life. That's my view on the sentencing. Prosecutors law. pointed out he, you know, said that he was, he lied the night because he was high and paranoid. They also pointed out for all during the investigation, even after he stopped using, allegedly, uh, he was still lying. Yeah, I, I don't see the judge it's considering the opioid addiction as being a mitigating factor with respect to the sentencing. I mean, one of the challenges of having the sentencing at 9.30 a.m. tomorrow morning is I don't think there's going to be an opportunity for either side to present much evidence or do an investigation of the circumstances of the defendant's opioid use and when it started and why it started and to present any of that. But from what the judge has seen during the trial, it's hard for me to imagine that the judge is going to view that as a particularly mitigating circumstance here. Mark Mara, what are you expecting tomorrow? So first of all, I, I thought it amazingly quick that it's going to be done tomorrow morning because, as was just said, there's not a lot of time to do any type of a mitigation workup. Now, presumably, they've done it beforehand. But look at, the, we have to remember the way this judge now looks at this case. He stays impartial until the verdict. Now he has a verdict. There is no reasonable doubt left. There is no residual doubt left. This man intentionally and with all malice of forethought and all these other words that we use about the intention that he used, the planning that he used, the premeditation, this judge, he gave us a hint of it, this judge is going to come on that bench tomorrow and say, a jury of your peers found you guilty without any question. They considered it. They found you guilty. I find you guilty now and follow the verdict of the jury, and you are getting convicted because of the heinous nature of everything you did. And when you kill your son, 
And when you kill your wife, you're going to prison for the rest of your life without question and no mitigation, even if there was the, the suggested mitigation of the opiates is going to change that, that sentence. Rand, Randy, what do you think of the, how drugs played in the courtroom? Well, I, I think they I think they understood. I think the jury understood that this was part of his lifestyle, but I don't think they took it as an excuse for uh, possibly committing murder, which now we know they believed he did commit uh, a double murder. But Anderson, just very quickly, you know, he, we say he lied and he and he was uh, on these opioids, and that's why he was lying. But he did one final interview with law enforcement in August, just a couple of months after the murders, and he had already gone. He was from that interview was while he was in rehab. He was clean, and he was specifically asked, "Where were you?" Were you at the kennels earlier in the night? And he was still lying about it. So even after being clean, he was lying about it. So he yeah, could he, no longer blame the opioids for He said thoughts. on the stand that he had been clean for several hundred days and was very proud of that, understandably. Uh, but he was also lying, continuing to lie all during that. Uh, Randy Kay, thank you. Jill Huntley Taylor, Mark O'Mara, Jessica Roth, Joe Jackson, John Miller. Cena's coverage of Alec Murdoch's guilty verdict continues. Cena Tonight with Allison Camerata is next right after a short break.